Hello everyone. In this session, we will show how to do the EOQ model and the quantity discount model calculation through examples. Let's first take a look at an example of EOQ model. Now, a local distributor for a national tire company expects to sell approximately 9,600 steel belted radio tires of a certain size and treat design next year. Annual carrying cost is $16 per tire and ordering cost is $75. The distributor operates 288 days a year. First question, what is the EOQ? Now remember to calculate the EOQ, the formula is straightforward. The EOQ quantity Q star equals to square root of 2ds divided by h. Now, in the formula, we need to know few numbers. d, which is uh, demand. s is ordering cost, which is ordering cost per order. And h is the holding cost. Now, here we mentioned the demand d and the holding cost need to be consistent. If what we use is annual demand, then the holding cost should be annual holding cost. If what we use is monthly demand, then the holding cost should be adjusted to monthly holding cost as well. Now, let's take a look at this question and see whether or not the required numbers are given here. We see the sales is 9600 per year. Carrying cost or holding cost is $16 per tire and ordering cost is $75. So all the three numbers, D, H, S, are given in the question. To calculate the EOQ quantity, it is straightforward result from substituting all these three numbers into the formula. We can do the calculation and get an optimal order quantity or the EOQ quantity for this problem equals to 300 units which means the dealer, uh, the distributor, need to order 300 units of the specified tire every time. One thing to remind you is don't forget to take the square root of the calculation. This is one error I've seen before. Next, how many times per year does a store reorder? Which is how many orders does a distributor need to place every year. So number of orders we place basically is the result of the total demand or total quantity we need to order divided by the number of quantity we order every time. For example, if over the year we need to order 100 unit and every time we only order 10 unit, then we need to place 100 divided by 10, which is 10 order per year. So similarly, in this question, we use the demand D divided by the order quantity, the EOQ quantity, which is 300 and get a 32, which means based on our demand of 9,600 unit per year and our EOQ quantity of 300 unit per order, we need to place 32 orders per year. Part C asks us to calculate the length of an order cycle. So the length of order cycle basically is the interval between two orders, between two consecutive orders. So from the time I place the order now till the time that I place the next order, what will be the length of the interval? which is the length of an order cycle. Now, this actually is determined by two numbers, which is, well, what is the time interval we are talking about? Second is, how many orders we need to place? For example, if we need to operate 10 days, and we need to place two orders over this 10 days time period, then the order cycle will be 10 divided by 2, which is 5. That is the interval between the two orders. For this problem, basically it is given that 
the distributor operates 288 days per year. So this will be the working days, the total working days we have annually. And the number of orders we need to place is 32 orders. So we use 288 divided by 32 to get 9. But this 9 is working days, it's not the calendar days. If we want to use the calendar days, then we need to use 365 divided by 32, which will be another number. Part D, what is the total annual cost if the EOQ quantity is ordered? Now here, we do not have the information of the unit cost per tire. So we only need to calculate the holding cost and the ordering cost. And we can have the inventory holding cost equals to the average inventory level, which is the EOQ quantity divided by 2, times the holding cost per unit. We get the annual holding cost equals to $2,400. Similarly, we can calculate the ordering cost, which basically is the number of orders, that is 32, what we calculated before, times the ordering cost, which get another 2400 we should not be surprised by seeing that the inventory holding cost and ordering cost equal to each other in this question. Why? Because if you remember, previously when we derive the EOQ quantity, we see EOQ quantity is a quantity that at this quantity, the inventory holding cost and the ordering, ordering cost actually equal to each other. So basically, if we are using EOQ quantity, then we only need to calculate one of these two costs and the other one will be the same. Now, since it asks the total annual cost, we need to add them up, get a total cost of $4,800. Now, let's take a look at an, a question that with quantity discount. The maintenance department of a large hospital uses about 816 cases of liquid cleanser annually. Ordering costs are $12, carrying costs are $4 per case a year, and the new price schedule indicates that orders of less than 50 cases will cost $20 per case, 50 to 79 cases will cost $18 per case. 80 to 99 cases will cost 17 per case, and a larger order will cost $16 per case. Now we need to determine the optimal order quantity and the total cost. Now, for this question, it is not as simple as the one we just finished, because here we have a quantity discount. If every time we place a larger order, then we can enjoy the price discount. So we need to consider this price discount into our cost, which means if we need to calculate the total cost, all the evaluation should be based on the sum of holding cost, ordering cost, plus the purchasing cost. So the three, uh, the four price discount are given as 20, 18, 17, and 16. Now let's see how to solve this problem. First, we list the order range and the corresponding price. We have the range from 1 to 49, it will be $20 per case, 50 to 79, $18 per case, etc. And by the end, if we order 100 cases or more every time, then the price will be $16 per case. And uh, the question gave us the basic information. Annual demand is 816, holding cost is $4, and uh, the ordering cost is $12 per order. Of course, we can always calculate the EOQ quantity first. EOQ quantity is 70. But now, we need to be careful. Is, is this 70 cases per order the best? Now we need to evaluate why, because if we take a look at the price range and the corresponding order quantity, 70 means we are in the range from 50 to 79, and we need to pay $18 per case. 
there are some other cases. If we order more, actually the unit cost will be lower. So we really need to evaluate or measure whether or not this 70 or this optimal quantity, EOQ quantity, is the optimal. Let's take a look at the plot here. The plot here, we have four lines. The four lines basically corresponding to the four scenarios with four different price. So if we assuming that each case is $20 per case, then the total cost, here we're talking about total cost, ordering cost, holding cost, uh, ordering cost, holding cost, and the purchasing cost. So assume we do not have the quantity discount and every case costs us $20, then we expect that the total cost curve is a curve on the top. If, on the other hand, we assume every single case is $18 per case, we can draw a plot the total cost curve as a second curve here. And similarly, we can draw the total cost curve corresponding to $17 per case and $16 per case on this plot. But when we see this curve here, we realize that, well, in reality, the corresponding price actually is related with the order quantity per time. For example, $20 per case only valid when the order quantity is less than 50 cases per time. And $18 per case corresponds to the order quantity between 50 and 79, and so on and so on. That is why on each curve we have a solid curve and a dashed curve. So the solid line basically is the valid order quantity and the total cost. And the dashed line is an invalid or unfeasible price. So if we look at it, the solid curve from these four different price curves will give us the total valid cost over the whole order quantity range. So if our order quantity is less than 50, we move on the first curve until we hit the line or hit the point corresponding to the 50, and then we jump to the second line, and as the order quantity increase until 80 case per time, we jump to the third line, and when we go to 100 case per order, we jump to the last line here. Now, with all these three numbers here, with all, the, all, all these four curves here, we see 70 is the EOQ quantity. It is valid on the second line here. But the question is, we need to compare the price from all four lines to decide whether or not the 70 is optimal order quantity. First, we need to look at the two price range that is lower than the current price. Now, for these two curves, $17 per case and $16 per case, we only need to evaluate the point on the left end of the range. Why? Because, as we see, the total cost curve is decreasing until we hit the EOQ quantity then the price start to increase. So if the solid curve located on the right side of the EOQ quantity, we should expect that the total cost will increase as the order quantity increase. So for each of these two price range, we only need to evaluate the left end value because this will be the lowest total cost within the order quantity range, which means if we order between 80 to 99, then the order quantity for 80 will give us the lowest 
total cost. If the order quantity is 100 or higher, then actually the order quantity of 100 unit per order will have the lowest cost. However, we do not need to evaluate anything that is located on the left side of the EOQ quantity. Why? You need to think about it. Okay, now everything is straightforward. We need to compare the price range and the order quantity range for $18 per case, $17 per case, and $16 per case. For $18 per case, which is between 50 to 79, EOQ quantity is the optimal order quantity. So we need to substitute 70 as order quantity in this case and calculate the total cost. For the other two scenario, we need to evaluate the order quantity of $80 per unit and order quantity of $100 per unit and see which one give us the lowest total cost. Now, we can calculate the three scenarios, the total cost under this three scenario, order at $70 per case per order, um, order 80 cases per order, and order 100 cases per order. Now, if we compare the total cost, the total cost need to include carrying cost, order cost, and purchase cost. Carrying cost is based on the average inventory level and the holding cost per unit. Order cost is determined by the number of order we placed and order cost per order. And purchasing cost is determined by the annual demand and the unit cost. Now, compare these three calculations, the difference are the order quantity, 70, 80, 100, and also the unit price in the purchasing cost. So this will give us the total different total cost. Now, by substituting everything into this formula, the total cost formula, we can get the different total cost. And of course, order 100 case per unit is optimal because it has the lower total cost. Now, this example just shows us if quantity discount exists, then EOQ quantity may not be the optimal order quantity. Why? Because EOQ quantity is a balance between the holding cost and the ordering cost, but purchasing cost itself is not considered in the ordering cost, uh, in, the, in the EOQ quantity. So if we have the quantity discount, then sometime if we order a larger quantity, then the saving from the purchasing cost may be greater than the extra carrying cost and ordering cost we may need to pay because we do not use the EOQ quantity. So this is the analysis of the approach to calculate the quantity discount problem.